just about the last time you're going to hear this theme. That's the Maury Amsterdam theme, but of course, Maury isn't with us anymore. Starting Monday night, it'll be Tommy Riggs and Betty Lou. But tonight, we have a wonderful guest. Our boy, Bill Gooden, is going to sing for you. And uh, this is Phil Goulding introducing the substitutes for Maury on tonight's show, Bob Elliott and Ray Goulding. Thank you very much, uh, Phil. Thank you, Phil. You look so handsome. I, you I, look like Ray's brother. And I... <laughs> well, it is. That's wonderful. Say, I'm so frightened out here in this big city, aren't you, Well, uh, you shouldn't be frightened, Raymond. I have uh, all friends of yours. Thank you, sir. I'm sure. I think you're very, very kind to of me. I wonder, I wonder if Phil would come over here and get us off for that special pickup. First of all, we should explain what we do on our program. Well, up why don't you do that, Ray? Well, what we do really is explain this. Explain it, Ray, what we do on the program up there. What do we do up there? <laughs> Bob, <laughs> would you take over? Can you explain it, Phil, what we do up there? Please, Phil, you've heard the show. I never listened to well, it. Well, what they do up there is, is what we call uh, here uh, the Maury Amsterdam show, only a little different. They, they do takeoffs on radio programs that you're probably very familiar with, and tonight they have a few for you. And want me to set the stage for the first one? Please. All right. We take you now to Lowe's Poli Theater in Last Chance, Saskatchewan, where Snickers Incorporated presents Dr. O.K., the sentimental banker. Thank you, and good evening. Before we get into our questions, let me introduce my assistant here at Lowe's Poli Theater, Last Chance Saskatchewan. In the orchestra to my left downstairs, Ed Sturdley. Thank you, Doctor. In the center orchestra downstairs, Ed Sturdley. Thank you, Doctor. In the orchestra to my right, Ed Sturdley. Thank you, Doctor. Upstairs in the balcony oh. to my left, Ed Sturdley. I must hurry along here now. Uh, thank you, Doctor. In the right balcony, Ed Sturdley. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. And now to our questions at our first contestant in the orchestra downstairs <laughs> to my right, Ed Sturdley. Thank you, Doctor. I beg your pardon. Our first contestant is in the balcony upstairs to my left, and Ed Sturdley. <laughs> We've got to hurry along. Yes, Mr. Yes, Sturdley, please. Well, I... I have a, a gentleman, Doctor. Fifteen copies of Guy Lombardo's record of Old Lang Syne featuring the twin pianos for this one. Are you ready, sir? Yes, Doctor. Is the distance between the pitcher's mound and the visitor's dugout at Jubilee Stadium in Birmingham, Alabama, 30 feet, 180 feet, 63 feet, or 110 feet? Let me see now, Doctor. It must uh... be one, sir. 110 feet, Doc. No, I'm awfully sorry, sir. That was our trick question for tonight. The correct answer is one. Didn't you hear me say it must be one? But a box of Snickers to that gentleman. And two tickets to next week's production here at Lowe's Poli Theater. Last chance to catch you all. And now to our next contestant, and Ed Sturdy in the orchestra down the <laughs> I, I have a violin player here, Doctor. We come now to the question which requires no special information, just general knowledge and clear thinking. Is that clear, sir? I can't hear you very well, sir, That's Doctor. That's fine, sir. All right. A giant A.C. Gilbert director set for more fun in the home for this general question. A man has set out on a table a football, a baseball, a golf ball, a soccer ball, and a basketball in that order. He moves the baseball to the right of the golf ball and the basketball to the left of the football in that order. And then he picks up the baseball, placing it to the right of the golf ball. And now the question, where is the soccer ball? I'm afraid I don't know, Doctor. Want to take a guess, sir? No, I don't think so. Oh, I think you'd find the soccer ball next to the golf ball and in front of the baseball. But two tickets to next week's production here at Lowe's Poli Theater, Last Chance Saskatchewan, which incidentally will be the moving life story of Helena Rubenstein. <laughs> Starring Bella Lugosi in his first dancing role. And thanks for being such a good sport. Ah, you fat as mustache. You're a uh, naughty. You always work. Now to our next contestant. Uh, before our next contestant, a word from Anthony C. Allen. Thank you, Doctor. The word this week, Doctor, Petty Rosporum No Valley. Thank you, Mr. Allen. And now to Ed Sturdy in the orchestra to my left. I have a lady, Doctor. Eight copies of the record Wind, Wind, Wind of the Western Sea by Franklin McCormick. If this... If this lady doctor can answer the question, are you ready, madam? Yes, I am, doctor. We come to our tongue twister, which I can only repeat once. Are you ready? Yes, I am, doctor. All right, here we go. Sister Susie sh sell sea sh sell seashells on the seashore and shine su shoes on the side. Sister sells Susie seashells on the sea, 
Sure, and shine shoes on the side. That's right. Absolutely right. That lady's uh, doctor's name and address, please. Your name and address, please. Drusilla S. Larson, M.D., Rugged Trail, Last Chance 13, Saskatchewan. Thank you. And a box of Snickers to that winner. What size Snickers do you wear, madam? Eight and a half. Thank you. And a round, a round of applause from our audience here. Hooray. And now to Ed Sturdy. Ed Sturdy in the standees in the lobby outside. There's nobody out here, Doctor. Well, all right, let's try the mezzanine, then. If the door's locked, there. All right, then. Uh, let's try Ed Sturdy in the orchestra downstairs. I have a gentleman, Doctor. We come now to our famous American question. I'll give you three clues. If you answer after the first, you'll receive an electric welding kit. If you answer after the second clue, you'll receive a genuine Madagascan chameleon. But if it takes you all three clues, your prize will be a portable wall safe. Do you understand, sir? <laughs> No, I don't, Doctor. All right, here's your first clue. I was born... Ted Williams, Doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a good try, sir. Keep it up. Here's your second clue for the Madagascan chameleon. Margaret O'Brien, Doctor. Oh, <laughs> wait, please, sir, until I give you the clue. I was in Kitty Hawk the same weekend the Wright brothers first flew their plane. I invented the steamboat, the sewing machine, and ready-made biscuit mix. Who am I? William Bendix? No, I'm sorry, sir. Henry Byrne? <laughs> no. Carmen Lombardo? No, wait. Uh, Donald wait. Novus? No, wait for the next clue, please. For the Franklin McCormick records, I'm often called the father of infantry drill regulations. My first name is not Everett, and I tried unsuccessfully three times to swim the English Channel. Who am I, sir? Grant Volney, doctor. You're right. You're right, sir. As far as you've gone, but... I'm afraid you haven't given us his full name. Can you finish his name, sir? Grant Volney what? Grant Volney McGill? <laughs> no, sir. Try again. One more try. I'm Grant sorry. Grant Volney McCabe, doctor. No. LeBurk. No, I'm sorry. Your time is up, sir. You came so close. I think you'd find his full name to be Grant Volney Jr. But thanks for being a good sport. <laughs> and a pair of Snickers to you, sir. That gentleman's name and address, please. John Karen, New York 20, New York. That was real strenuous. I think right now you need a cigarette. So why don't you come in? Hello there. This is Basil Rathbone. Now at last, a long cigarette of lasting quality. Fatima. First quality for 30 years. Buy the best of long cigarettes. Buy Fatima. Well, our boys Bob Elliott and Ray Goulding. It seems funny saying that name. We'll be back in just a moment. But right now we have our boy... Bill Gooden, seated at the piano, is going to play and sing for you. What is it tonight, Bill? Say, Phil, how about Waterfront, dedicated to uh, Maury and his family? Maury? Who's yeah. Maury? Oh, yeah. Maury, yeah. Amsterdam. Yeah. Oh, sure, go oh, ahead. Yeah. By the way, too, you know for uh, Gertie and Clarky and Willie and the boys at the Marjorie? How about the fellas <laughs> at the <laughs> Glen Falls Chicken Farm? Why, Three sure, right, right now. Down. There we go, play it, Waterfront. Away from the city, it hurts and mocks. I'm standing alone by the desolate dark In the still, in the still of the night I see the rising The great unknown But my heart is heavy as heavy as stone Till the dawn coming on Make it light I cover the waterfront I'm watching the sea Will the one love Soon come back to me I cover the waterfront I'm in search of my love I 
for time on our program tonight. So here they are, Bob and Ray. Take it away. Now, The Life and Loves of Linda Lovely, written for radio by E. Carrington Lump. The story that proves a young, sophisticated debutante from a wealthy New York family cannot find romance in a dingy little mining town out west. David, Linda's fiancé, has been away too long, years, exploring darkest Africa, and only last week returned to Linda's side. He is not the same David he was two years ago. He's ill. He's broke. Broke. Broken. Low in spirits. It's late afternoon now as we see Linda sitting before a crackling fire in her little house at River's Mouth. (laughs) David, ill, broken, low in spirits, the slider speaks. Linda, I, I suppose you've noticed I'm... I'm home. Oh, yes, David. Back home after two long years. Exploring. Exploring darkest Africa with my... With your brave, bald, bull. Say nothing of baggy... Band of bronze banditos. Linda! Yes, my darling? I'm... I'm broke, and so... Low in spirits. Yes, my dear. David. David. Would you please pass me another yummy toasted marshmallow? <laughs> Here you are. Oops, it's hot. Careful, darling. I'll... You'll what, my love? I'll wrap it in a piece of Kleenex. Oh, David. Yes, Linda? David, you're home again. Yes, yes. Back at last. From deep, dark, dank Africa. Yes, yes. Ill, broken, low in spirits. Yes, yes. David, you're home. Oh, Fanny, Fanny, Fanny. Was that the phone, David? I believe so. I'll I'll pick it up and see. Hello? Yes, Cliff, how are you? Yes, I, I'm back from Africa. A bit ill, uh, somewhat broken and quite low in spirits. But other than that, the same old David. I... The other phone, David. Just a moment, Cliff. I, hello? Uh, Grace! We were just talking about you sitting here. Linda, oh, we, uh, I'll get this one. Hello, uh, Cliff. Oh, hello. Just a minute. Oh, Genevieve. Uh, uh, if you'll hold on. Grace, will you hold on just a minute? Hello, Cliff. Uh, Cliff, hold it just a minute. Grace, is still there. Uh, hang on just a minute. Hello. Uh, this hello, is David. Genevieve. Charlie. Well, listen. Yes, listen I'm home, me. but I've got two other calls. Oh, how wonderful it sounds. I, Graham. Uh, hold on, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, Linda, you've put more phones in since I went away. Hold on a minute, Genevieve. Hello? Uh, Cliff. 
Cliff, uh, wait just wait just a moment, if you will. Uh, but somebody's Cliff. Uh, I'll go. Wait a minute, Genevieve. What's that, Charlie? I've got two or three more calls here. Yes. I'm the electric light lady, man. Oh, well, go right downstairs. Uh, wait a minute, Cliff. Who is it, Linda? It's the electric company, David. Uh, tell them we're out. Hello, Charlie. We're out. Don't go downstairs. Okay. What are you saying, Ed? Hello. Listen. Well, Genevieve, listen to me. I had more fun. Let's have a quiet little talk. Say, wasn't the party wonderful last night? Okay, George, be seeing you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, hello, Bill. It, wasn't it so yes, silly? Back from I thought I'd die laughing when Jim Farley drank ketchup out of Hopalong Cassidy's boot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell her about Turhan Bay. Oh, yes. yes. And Turhan Bay came in without his turban. I thought I'd die. Well, look, Ned, I... could have at least gotten a haircut. I'll have to see about that in the morning. Oh, right oh, now, yes. I'm, I'm ill, broken, oh, yes. low in, oh. in, in spirit. Oh. Yes. Meanwhile, across town, unmindful of the happy homecoming of David, after his expedition to the jungles of darkest Africa, of darkest Africa, spreading some calves hoof jelly on a bagel, the younger of the two men looks up and says, Hey, Dwight. Yeah, Finch. How old are you? Thirty-two. Okay, you speak up. You're the youngest. Okay. Say, so you ask that fiddle player, can he play Cazadas for us? Hey, Dwight, that's, uh, that's a silent C, I think. It's pronounced like a K is in Cesartus. It's my mistake, Finch. Will you please pass down the imitation flavor great drink? Here you are, Dwight. <laughs> Thanks. Well, here is a surprising turn of events. David home, ill, broken, low in spirits. And now, Linda, injured in her crash through the old rocking chair, bequeathed to her as a bequest from her grandmother. What will the outcome be, and what part will the men we know only as Dwight and Finch play in the lives of David and Linda? Perhaps tomorrow we'll learn more of this engrossing story as the next chapter in the life and loves of Linda Lovely unfolds. Well, since I've worked with Maury Amsterdam for quite a while, I know that broke routine very well. And the only way I can make up for it is with a commercial now and then, like, for instance, Arid. Don't be half safe. Don't be half safe. Get this new cream deodorant. It safely stops underarm perspiration for one to three days. Does not damage dresses. Or men's shirts. It completely protects you from offending by deodorizing safely, surely, instantly on contact. Yes, no other deodorant tested. Only Arid stops perspiration and deodorizes so completely yet so safely. Yes, safely as proved by leading doctors. It's antiseptic. A pure white vanishing cream does not irritate skin. And attention, attention, please. The amazing new ingredient, Cremogen, has now been added to Arid. The new Arid with Cremogen stay smooth and creamy. All Arid is now guaranteed not to crystallize or dry out in the jar or a new jar free as stated on the package. Don't be half safe. Don't be half safe. Be Arid safe. Use Arid to be sure. Get the new Arid, A-R-R-I-D, today. Only 39 cents plus tax. Us the folks mumble. Here are true stories, personal stories, human stories of people like you and me. Tonight we'll hear two men, 95 years old, sing, Carry my back, Paul You'll meet the man who invented the donut, and he'll tell his own story. Why well, discovered a processed donuts with just little globs of gold. We'll hear an incredible story of a woman's daring and resourcefulness and many others, stories you hear only when us, the folks, mumble. Now, here is Philo Moulton. Thanks, Ed, and good evening, everyone. A few years ago, in the town of Craw, Wyoming, a rancher noticed that a number of his herd were disappearing each night. The story of why they disappeared and how this rancher stopped the strange occurrence makes real human interest. And here is Fratmer Sturdley to tell what happened in his own work. Excuse me. Excuse me, Fratmer. Maybe you'd better use our words right there. I used to count my cattle every night at sundown. And over a period of two weeks, I noticed my cattle were slowly disappearing away from my ranch. And I said to my wife, I said, where is the cattle going? She said, away, I think. 
I see, and go on, sir. So, with story. so oh. I decided to check with the sheriff, who came right over to me, to my ranch. And I said to the sheriff, 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 some of my cattle is disappearing every night, Sheriff. What shall, what shall I do I, to stop this? And my wife said, my husband's right, Fratmer, or Sheriff. I see, and then what happens, sir? You are not showing much sense here, said the sheriff. Mm-hmm. And I said, maybe you're. You're right, Sheriff. <laughs> sheriff, what will I do? And my wife said, yes, Sheriff, what should he do? And the sheriff then showed me how to count my cattle. I see. And I discovered that they were all there, only. Only I hadn't counted them right. Then the roof fell in on me. Amazing. <laughs> and thank you, Fratmer Sturdley. Tonight on Us the Folks, we're going to take you behind the scenes in show business and introduce to you a man who gets little acclaim, but who is vastly responsible for the careers of many of America's greatest stars. Ladies and gentlemen, here at our Us the Folks microphone is Dave Morris, publicity man. Thanks very much, Philo. Good evening, everyone. Dave, tell us uh, a little bit about the work of a publicity man. Well, Philo, it's dog-eat-dog in my business. Uh Uh-huh. My job, of course, is keeping my clients' names in the news. To make those names household words in every household. And in in order to do this, what do you do? A multitude of things. Well, would you tell us something of some of the outstanding publicity campaigns you put on? I'd be glad to, Philo. Probably one of the most thrilling campaigns was the one I did for Al Murch back in 43. Al Murch, I don't believe I remember. He was an up-and-coming singer. And how did you publicize him? Well, I decided Al wasn't well-known enough, Mm -hmm. so I devised a scheme whereby he was to hang by his thumbs from the 58th floor of the Empire State Building at high noon and sing doody do on an old kazoo into a hanging microphone. Well, that sounds as if it should have gotten his name and picture into papers all over the country. It did, Philo. But unfortunately, Al had weak thumbs. (laughs) And... Fell off just as he hit the second D do. He had a lot of talent, though. Well, that was one publicity campaign that sort of backfired, wasn't it? Then, then I worked out a terrific scheme to get publicity for Bing Crosby. For Bing Crosby. Yes, eh? I figured he needed to be better known, so <laughs> I approached him with the idea that he should walk across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. But he didn't go for the idea. He didn't like it, huh? He had a question, and that question killed the whole proposition. What was that question? Suppose I fell off. (laughs) I couldn't answer that, so we had quite a laugh over that, Philo. And it didn't go through. Well, uh, just what are you doing now, Dave? Well, Philo, right now I'm writing all the press releases for Rubinoff and his magic violin. Oh, you're you're handling Ruby, are you? Yes, I write all the stuff you read about him. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm Eastern representative for Donald Novus. Well, we thank you, Dave Morris, for giving us this inside story of how a publicity man works. Finally now, an unusual story from real life. Standing by at our Us the Folks mumble microphones in Bumper Harvest, Nebraska, are two brothers who haven't seen each other in 40 years. They're separated from each other by a screen, and neither knows the other is anywhere near. Now, when I press this button on the table, that screen on the stage in Bumper Crop, Nebraska, will rise, and they'll stand face to face for the first time in 40 years. And we'll hear their very first words upon meeting. Now, I'm going to press this button. Our engineer is going to bring in Bumper Crop, Nebraska. <laughs> the button won't work, Milo. <laughs> well, I'll, <laughs> I'll press it just the same. Here goes. Hi. Hi. Hey, uh, you ain't my brother. Funny, you're not mine neither. Hey, this is amazing, ain't it? We return you now to New York. The next five minutes of this program are brought to you by Thieves Incorporated with news of a marvelous money-making offer. Learn how to turn your spare time into ready cash, how to be a successful burglar, how to be the big wheel of your gang. We'll tell you all about it right after Mission Bell Wine. Sweeter than the kiss of a sweet Swiss mist, that's Italian Swiss colony wine. Mellow as the moon on the night in June, that's Italian Swiss colony wine. A flavor rare beyond compare, you'll never miss with Italian Swiss. For it's present as a dream by the old mill stream, that's Italian Swiss colony wine. Yes, and you'll fall in love with delicious Italian Swiss colony wine. 
Aged in the wood in the cool cellars of California's historic wine colony, Italian Swiss colony gold medal label wine is rich in flavor, mellow in taste. A flavor rare beyond compare. You'll never miss with Italian Swiss. Or as pleasant as a dream by the old mill stream. That's Italian Swiss colony wine. Italian Swiss colony, San Francisco, California. Say, would you like to make fifty, one hundred, or one hundred fifty thousand dollars in your spare time this very weekend? Of course you would, so listen carefully. Send today for the complete handy burglary guide, plus the special extra introductory offer of a beginner's burglary kit and a pair of special suction shoes for climbing up walls. Get this popular <laughs> bestseller among burglars. The book that takes you behind the scenes in crime gives you the know-how to pull big jobs. Listen to some of its interesting chapter headings. One, casing a joint. Two, forging a head. Three, how to distinguish between diamonds and zircons, as well as how to tell 12, 14, or 18 karat gold at a glance. Four, how to talk turkey to a fence. Five, airtight alibis for every occasion. When the postman delivers your big package, take $3.50 in cash from him. <laughs> no stamps, please. Then read and enjoy this giant volume for 30 days. Use your beginner's burglary kit. Try on the special suction shoe. If at the end of 30 days you are not completely satisfied, if you do not agree that this is the most sensational offer ever made over the air, you are serving 6 to 12 years for petty larceny. Don't delay. Do it today. Right now, get your card or letter in the mail. Remember, your book, burglar's kit, and suction shoes will be sent in plain wrapper. Simply write your name and address on a penny postcard or in a letter together with the word burglar... And mail to Thieves, WMGM, New York, 22. Well, be with us again Monday night for a brand new show. Tommy Rick, Betty Lou, and Brian Adrian. My thanks to Maury Amsterdam for being with us for all these years and the great times we've had with us. And thanks to Bob Elliott and Ray Goulding for coming down from Boston tonight to put on this show. You're still to the call letters of the stars, WMGM. That's for Golden Mary.